Quick question, Hotshot. Who's your favorite Attack on Titan character? If you picked anyone but this guy, then you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. You gotta love to be God in that yet. Love to tell me don't you grab it. There's nothing I love more than observing a fandom. It's like gazing into the deep psyche of a population. You immediately get an idea of what's working and what isn't, what people are deeply identifying with, and what they're just discarding to the side. Nowhere is this more apparent than the globally spanning Attack on Titan fandom. Characters like Mikasa and Levi have become icons that have managed to burst from the narrow fixture of anime culture and expand into the broader pop culture consciousness, not to mention the fact that you can see dozens of them at just about any con you go to. But there's one character who I believe deserves much more respect than all the rest of the cast, and that's Erwin Smith. I don't care what you say, Mikasa has the personality of Milk Toast. Aaron is a whiny little edgelord who's so incompetent that he managed to get himself kidnapped not once, not twice, but three goddamn times. Armin is billed as the tactical genius, the supposed Chikamaru of the series, but all of his plans aren't any smarter than basic observation skills. Levi is a one-note badass with one defining quirky trait, and the rest of the supporting cast doesn't have much going for them either. But the one character who deserves all of your praise, fan art, cosplay, and AMV tributes is Erwin. Now I know what you might be thinking. What makes this guy special? Erwin is the typical post-apocalyptic commander who is willing to rally the troops with speeches, which is an archetype we've seen again and again. We will not vanish without a fight. Today we face the monsters that are at our door. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. And bring the fight to them. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Today, we are canceling the apocalypse. But there's something that separates him from those other archetypes. On one hand, you could say that Erwin is almost villainous. He's a man who has blood in his hands, who's commanded hundreds of men and women to their deaths, all in his efforts to understand the greater truth of his world. In that respect, he's much like Griffith from Berserk, who comes to the horrible realization that his quest to have a castle of his own will ultimately be built upon the backs of all the dead men who will follow him. The only path? Those who really want to make it to the castle must start to step over the ones who have fallen, or stay here to pave the roads for the ones with the will to make it. The cobblestones that have paved your chosen path are those skulls and bones of the dead whom you used. And they before you killed three, four, five-fold the people, so that you may stand here now. But the key difference that separates him from Griffith is that Erwin is just as willing to sacrifice his own life and limb towards his cause. Nor is this better exemplified than in one of my favorite scenes. Yes, that's right, after leading a suicide charge of titans into Raynor, Erwin gets his arm bitten off by a titan, and he doesn't just beg or plead for his life, he tells his troops to advance and continue onward with their objective. He is willing to sacrifice his own arm and his life for the survival of his people. One thing we love in fiction are characters with conviction. In the real world, we like to imagine ourselves as paragons of integrity, but we often compromise our values all the time with hypocritical practices in daily life. That's why we love characters in fiction who stand for an ideal and will never compromise that ideal. That's why Batman has endured for nearly a century, and through all of his permutations, he has always has the same steely-eyed dedication to fighting his war and crime, and nothing will ever compromise that. That's what separates Erwin from the other Commander characters we see. It's his commitment to put his own flesh and blood on the line, along with those willing to die for him. I don't think there's a better scene that exemplifies this than one of my favorite moments from the manga. So be warned, we're going into spoiler territory, but I believe there's a very good chance we'll get to see this animated later this year when Attack on Titan's third season hits the airwaves. So a bit of setup. After winning the coup against the ruling royal race family, the Survey Corps are finally returning to where it all started. They are going back to reclaim the Shishigana district and finally use Eren's key to go into the basement and learn the truth of their world. But standing in their way are the traitors Bert Holt and Rainer, along with their commander Zeke and his terrifying Beast Titan form. Things go from bad to worse as Zeke, using the incredible strength of the Beast Titan, begins to pelt them with an artillery barrage of rocks. In a hopeless no-win situation, despite being so close to his goal, Erwin must make a final sacrifice to ensure a potential future for his people. This will be our final attack! Everyone, line up! All of us will leave a mounted suicide attack. The objective is the Beast Titan. Naturally, when I say objective, I mean the target of the attack. 
we will observe and take into account the timing of the target's rock throws, and then we will fire smoke bombs simultaneously. We want to throw off the accuracy of the rock throwing as much as possible. While we act as a decoy, Captain Levi will take down the Beast Titan. Thus concludes the briefing. <laughs> we just stand here, we'll eventually get showered with boulders. We need to hurry and get ready. Uh, 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 are, are we uh, about to die? Yes. So if we're, if we're gonna die anyway, it's better to go down fighting. Is, is that what you're saying? Yes. No, if we're gonna die anyway, whether we die doing something or die disobeying an order, either way, there's no meaning to it, is there? That is absolutely right. It is truly meaningless. It doesn't matter what your hopes and dreams are, or if you got to lead a happy life, or if you got shredded to peace by rocks. It's all the same. Men all eventually die. Does that mean that there is no meaning to life? That even being born at all is meaningless? And if so, is that the same for our fallen comrades? Were those soldiers' deaths also meaningless? No, absolutely not. It's up to us to give meaning to those soldiers' deaths. Those brave dead men. Those poor dead men. The only ones who are capable of paying respect to them are we, the living! We too shall die here today and entrust those next in line with the same duty of giving meaning to us! Charge! Now, fire! <laughs> That is the only way for us to fight against this cruel world! Rage, my soldiers! Scream, my soldiers! Fight, my soldiers! Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. The wise men at their end know dark is right. Because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death, who see with blinding sight, blind eyes that blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on that sad height, curse. Bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage against the dying of the light. Hope you enjoyed that. In case you're wondering, yes, this entire video is just an excuse so I could make that. But in time, we'll see if the anime version can live up to my interpretation. So if you don't like them already, I hope this might have changed your mind. And if you already have come to love those furry eyebrows, then use this video as another notch in your belt to justify your sexy, sexy Irwin fan art and Levi X Irwin slash fiction. For all you people who are caught up on the manga and wondering what my opinion is in the Armin vs. Erwin Civil War, Armin was completely wrong. Erwin should have gotten the Colossal Titan powers. He would have been the best Colossal Titan ever. So again, thanks for your time, and remember, lobster's antennas, but don't you grab it.